Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Ad Talk. Um, that stands for Amicable Divorce Discussions. My name is Tracy Ann Moore Grant, and I'm the founder of the Amicable Divorce Network. I am an attorney, a mediator, an arbitrator, guardian ad litem with Patterson Moore Butler, which is in Cumming, Georgia, Forsyth County, Georgia, north of Atlanta. And today I'm really pleased to be talking with Paulette Rigo, who also holds many different hats in the divorce industry. So I will let her uh, introduce herself. And today we're going to be talking about um, divorced parents, a guide for helping children feel at home in two households, which is certainly an issue that hits home for many families as they move forward um, with two different households and the future blending of families. So Paulette, um, introduce yourself to everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Such a pleasure to be here. I am the founder of Better Divorce Academy. I created it because I personally went through an eight and a half year litigated divorce trial. It was a 12 day trial that lasted over nine months, took place over nine months. Uh, I myself thought if you had a 12 day trial, it would just be 12 consecutive days, but silly me, um, I was as green and naive as they come. And then after the divorce proceedings were complete and the judge made their decision, there was a four-year appellant process. Wow. And that incredibly draining, uh, but yet knowledgeable experience, uh, there's always a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, it really propelled me to create a better experience. So I knew that I needed to do a lot of research um, and change the the conversation about what divorce can and should look like. Now, I'm not pro litigation or pro anything. It just so happens that's my personal experience. And I too, uh, when many people reached out to me and said, can you help? I heard about your case. I can't believe you're still not divorced yet. What is taking so long? Uh, I said, well, you know, come on over. Let's talk, see what I can do to help you. Uh, but my attorney said, you should consider being a, a litigator. And we laughed. And uh, there was a, a few choice words back and forth with that joke. And I, I did become a credentialed registered mediator myself and a certified divorce coach. I also specialize in high conflict and recovery from more high conflict cases and a lot of career transition because so many women lose child support and alimony and they really don't have a plan about how they're going to support themselves post decision. So that is why I do what I do. I'm also the author of Better Divorce Blueprint. In fact, I just got the book uh, yesterday, The Proof. So it's a real 307 page guidebook, a blueprint about just that, how to make divorce easier and better for you and your family. Right. Uh, I know I'm looking forward to uh, getting my copy. I'm sure I'm on the uh, short list for that. So <laughs> you are. Yeah. Um, so today we're talking about um, how to make children feel at home in two different households. Um, that's just when you divorce with children, something that inevitably happens. Um, they now have two bedrooms. Um, two homes, you know, very sometimes different parenting cultures. Um, so, you know, what are your tips for helping children through this time? Well, I, thank you for that. I've taken a lot of time, not only myself having lived through it, but with hundreds of clients helping them because such a large percentage of families do involve the uh, divorce situation with children involved. And sometimes there are even grandparents' homes involved too. So it isn't always just mom and dad. And then there can be step parents and cousins and grandparents. And it, it can really get complicated. And children can feel like they're um, being juggled around between home A and B and maybe even C, D and E. And it isn't just as simple as having two toothbrushes and uh, two sets of backpacks and all those school supplies. It, it's a, a lot of preparation goes into the decision of what to do. Um, 
the aftermath of divorce typically will create a parenting plan that we all know uh, some sort of dividing of marital um, estates is not the um, the only issue. It's dividing the, the time between the children. And that may be 50-50. It may not be. It really just depends on the situation. But it's challenging. So I like to think also that there can be some advantages to shared parenting. Um, I've also done a lot of interviewing with some child experts about the difference between what co-parenting looks like and parallel parenting looks like. Uh, parallel parenting is more when mom has her rules and dad has his rules and we don't necessarily discuss them because, well, let's just say we have difference of opinions uh, that may include diet, it may include bedtime. Mm -hmm. It may include discipline. Uh, I could keep going, but you can see where there yeah, may I be. I think um, maybe just a, a good um, point here is generally with parallel parenting, you have two parents who usually don't have good communication. Um, they are not able to talk usually or able to come up with role, um, rules um, that apply to both homes. They can't have that level of communication. So what happens with parallel parenting um, is, you know, just like two straight lines that don't, you know, connect is that mom's house is run one way, dad's house is run a totally different way, and there really isn't an agreement on something. So that's what that term means, whereas some parties you know, the more communication that they have, the more consistency you might have in some of those um, rules that you're talking about. And thank you for clarifying, Tracy, that is really important that people understand the difference. And co-parenting is more that there is a little bit of a congruency between diet, school, homework, discipline, bedtimes, and just sort of feeling more comfortable communicating with one another. As I mentioned, there are some benefits. We don't typically see that. It, it, ideally, we don't get married and say, let's get divorced so that our kids can have benefits of shared parenting. But <laughs> it, it is, as, particularly as the children get older, you know, it's hard to juggle who's where and when. And if you have two parents that are communicating and they're able to work together as a well-oiled machine, then they can really benefit from having two love, loving parents. And that's ideally how children thrive with the love and guidance of both parents. Again, it's ideal, not always possible, but ideal. And it gives them the best chance in life of showing them that they can still have a meaningful and nurturing relationship with both mom and dad, teaching them conflict resolution skills. When kids see that their parents are in fact cooperating with one another, they learn to handle disappointments, disagreements constructively themselves, and they're able to focus on respectful and considerate resolutions and outcomes in their own life because they can witness it. Hey, if mom and dad can manage to have a conversation about us screaming, um, demanding children or loving wonderful ones too, then, I guess this is a good role model. It, hap it happens so that if the cooperation is there and they can make those important decisions together, even when the marriage is over and the parents have joint responsibilities, providing education, healthcare, and financial support, and starting to think of yourself as a business partner more than just being a mom and dad, then those equitable roles really are helpful. Mm -hmm. So that sets the stage and understanding, are we in a co-parenting model or are we in a parenting, a parallel parenting model? Mm -hmm. I don't really know that there's a hybrid because that could lead to some uh, more challenges down the road, but making that established decision right away so that the children don't have confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, I also highly suggest getting familiar with co-parenting apps. Mm -hmm. There must be 20 now. Yeah. I don't know, Tracy, what the numbers are, but I think tomorrow there'll be 21. There's just mm -hmm. always something new and innovative. So find some way that you can effectively and efficiently and constructively, but mostly consistently communicate with your partner mm -hmm. because the children thrive on routine, routine, routine. Mm -hmm. So it starts with really having a comprehensive parenting plan, planning ahead, putting things in writing, making sure that they really understand the roles of each parent, 
Um, and also working with a either parenting coordinator or using a mediator help you craft that conversation. Because if you can walk through education, medical, extracurricular, and religious decisions ahead of time, which you should, I mean, hopefully if you've had the, the right professional, those decisions will have been made. But it's, in, it's not only establishing them, but enforcing them, uh, although that seems like a harsh word to use, but routine and consistency is so key. Yeah. Now, I think just to um, let people know a couple of things that you touched on um, as far as these co-parenting apps, I think probably the biggest one is our family wizard. Um, and if you Google that, it'll probably bring up a lot of different options. Um, but these are sort of like a neutral platform um, for co-parenting where you don't need to be texting the other person. You can communicate within the app. You have a shared calendar where you can put information on their doctor's appointments, sporting events. You can upload medical receipts that require reimbursement, um, all types of different options. They're all different. Some are free, some have a small fee. Um, some allow your attorney to log in and view it um, as well, if that's important um, for a case or something like that. So lots of choices out there for people to decide what's really best for them. Um, and the parent coordinator that you touched on, I think in Georgia, um, we don't use them as much as people do in other states, which is unfortunate. It's a, um, I've done the training and I've done some parent coordination. Um, I always refer, you know, parties to it. But for those who aren't familiar, parent coordination is a, either a mental health professional or an attorney or somebody that's taken the training. Typically, each state is different for um, what uh, education and training they require to be this. But Generally speaking, this is a person who helps you resolve disputes. Um, you know, a very common issue that I see is technology rules. You know, should a child have a phone? Who has the password to the phone? Can the child have um, a, a TikTok account? You know, things like this where parents have very different ideas, but the, they need some consistency. And so a parent coordinator is sort of like a private mediator, but it is not confidential. They help you move through these disputes, sometimes documenting problems as needed for litigation. Um, but it, um, there's a lot of people that offer this service. So as opposed to going to court over minor disputes, it is a professional that you can enlist to just really help you guys move forward with resolutions, agreements, and you know, move along um, and get those things settled. I have found the use of co-parenting apps incredibly yes. powerful in avoiding conflict with correct, uh, com correctly communicating directly with the spouse and avoiding using the children as messengers. Mm -hmm. That is one of the big problems where the kids feel like they are the uh, the string between the two cans of, uh, you remember that telephone game we used to play? Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it makes them feel the tension and mm -hmm. having them not feel like they are the messenger, like, oh, honey, tell dad, or right. oh, why won't you let your mother know that, you mm -hmm. know, Avoiding that is very important. And also being willing to be flexible. There mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit of compromise and not steadfast. Mm -hmm. I had a client say he's three minutes late. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> let's, let's just take a, deep a little break. grace, <laughs> a little, a little bit of grace period, sir. Uh, is that five minutes? Is that 10? Is that 15? Is it a half an hour? Only you and your, your partner can make that decision, mm -hmm. but it does lead to making it less stressful for the kids, but mm -hmm. leading into the step to take specifically with the children, it, it all starts with having an incredibly positive attitude. If you are cheerful, relaxed, your kids will pick up on those feelings. If they tense, if you, they feel your tension and your um, frustration and your fear, your sadness, they will pick up on it. So trying your best to be incredibly relaxed and um, just comfortable with the, the situation. It's new, it's going to take some time, but projecting a positive attitude is where it all starts. I also suggest having a calendar, maybe it's on the refrigerator door or having some sort of um, bulletin board in um, a study area where they can see the schedule, vacations, doctor's visits, extracurricular activities, parties, special events, things to look forward to too, besides getting in the car and doing the switch. 
at a glance so that they can look at them. I also love color coding it. So mm -hmm. maybe one kid is pink and one is blue and one is purple and whatever their favorite color is. And they're also able to uh, write on it themselves and you know put stickers or of course age appropriately, whatever it looks mm -hmm. make make it seem more fun. And, yeah. and it's like something to look forward to than like time to go, time to the, the switch off now. It's a little bit more of something exciting to do. Right. Also keeping basic items, which seems like a no brainer and a definition of a basic item for some may not be a basic um, item for others. A lot of that would be favorite foods. Mm -hmm. uh, also besides the hairdresser, I'm sorry, besides the, um, <laughs> the hair dryer. I, I don't know why I said hairdresser. That would be a really interesting thing. They could have a hairdresser at each other. <laughs> hair dryer those are usually for teenage girls right mm -hmm. but those things are really important makeup toiletries toys uh, just something as simple as extra notebooks and pens and staplers and scissors so they're not bringing that stuff back right. and forth uh naturally toiletries are no brainer but you can just imagine how a child feels when they've lost uh, or can't seem to find their favorite blanket or their favorite mm -hmm. teddy bear or their favorite toy it really makes them feel stressed out and that lack of familiarity in both or more settings and i also suggest they plan for quiet time I know we want to cram in every minute when we're with our child to make it quality, quality, quality. And there's a natural feeling of awkwardness when they first arrive back with you, like catching up. Well, what did you do? And where did you go? And what happened? And just allowing them to have a little bit of a peaceful routine, maybe reading a book, taking a walk together, going to a park where nothing really needs to be said it's just a matter of a transitional time that's softer than, hi, how was your week? You know, what needs to be done it, to children that feels a little bit like feeling bombarded with, oh, here she goes again, or here he uh -huh. goes again. Also providing advanced notice, starting casually mentioning the up upcoming household change when the time to move is approaching. Uh, meaning they know that tomorrow's the day or in an hour we'll be um, getting ready to pack up and go to dad's or mom's. They feel more prepared, less anxious, and they don't feel like it just got thrown at them and there was mm -hmm. no uh, knowledge. Children lose track of time. They have no... Um, uh, you know, alarms and th they just live in this world of like time is uh, of not of the essence that we live mm -hmm. under. So when they get that countdown, like an hour or a half an hour or 30 minutes or however you word it, it makes them so much more relaxed and looking forward to it versus, well, I'm not done. I'm not ready. How come we have to go now? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's easier. Uh, and also involving the children or the child in the process, helping them to feel more empowered and in control while they're coping with these big changes in their family, maybe helping them making a decision of what to pack, uh, what toy maybe they want to bring, like a favorite stuffed animal that is going back and forth because you can't get two of the same, although mm -hmm. if they don't know, maybe that's our little <laughs> secret. Um, Making sure that they can participate in the decision-making process will help the mom and the dad also feel like they're involved in the process. And it isn't just, well, I have to do this because mom said, or I have to do that because dad told me to. Listening to their concerns and making sure that they do feel heard. I know as adults, that's something we hold near and dear to our heart and children feel the same way. It's really important that the children feel close and remain close to both parents uh, and to really keep animosity to its um, least amount of, uh, you know, bubbling up to the surface. Not to say that we don't all um, accidentally say something like, oh, I wish your father was more on time or, you know, not, not, nothing, you know, horrible, mm -hmm. but in keeping those, those emotions uh, at bay, whether we journal it, call a friend, uh, go in the bathroom and silently scream, but trying really hard to leave 
uh, the children out of that, cooperating with your ex-spouse so that you can make both households into loving homes for your children. It is possible. I've seen it happen. And for those children that grow up in uh, co-parenting success stories where they're able to have loving homes on both ends. They, they thrive in school. They feel like they can never have too many people that love them. Uh, I really uh, believe that, that you can never have too many people in your children's lives that love them. Uh, it's difficult sometimes when uh, the spouse now gets remarried or is starting to date somebody else. And you just start to feel like, hmm, I'm, I'm getting replaced, but you'll never get replaced. You'll always be the dad. You'll always be the mom. And it's important for the children to know that both parents really care about you. So I hope this has been helpful. It is possible. Reach out to somebody, get the support you need. It is hard to set yourself up for success when you don't know the parameters mm -hmm. and the best ways to approach it. Yeah, it's often very difficult in some of the situations that you touched on with a, um, a particularly a fresh divorce, one that might involve a lot of animosity uh, between the adults. Um, and it's just always important for people to remember, you know, the children um, really should be shielded from that. So as much as you can, even if you don't feel it inside of you, put on a happy front you know, for the children, um, don't vent to them, you know, call your best friend on the phone when they're not home, um, you know, and just sort of create an environment for them um, that makes them feel positive and, you know, happy. Really, in the end, you're going to end up having, you know, really healthy um, and good children that get through the process in, in just the best way possible. So, um, hopefully people, um, can continue to, to make those good choices. And if you struggle with that, there are many resources out there to help you. There's, um, divorce coaches, you know, like Paulette, mental health professionals, parent coordinators, um, co-parent therapists, and, and, um, all these individuals you can find on our website for the Amicable Divorce Network, which is, um, www.amicabledivorcenetwork.com. You can search by professional, search for people in your area, and just reach out to some resources um, if you have any questions at all or feel like you need a little bit of extra help during that difficult time to really put your kids front and center. So uh, Paula, I really appreciate you taking the time today with this valuable insight to really help people um, through the divorce process. And um, if you're looking at this video on our blog, there will also be Paulette's contact information there if you want to reach out um, to her with any questions that you may have or some help about um, getting through your divorce. So thank you very much, Paulette. I appreciate it. My pleasure. I care so much about this topic that I de designated a whole chapter in Better Divorce Blueprint to it. It's that important. It really is. Thank you. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in and uh, watching this segment of Ad Talks.